hello everyone hello and welcome back to another exciting literature class in today's class we'll be looking at the themes and style in emily bronte's wuthering heights the themes and style in emily bronte's wuthering heights behavioral ob objectives at the end of the lesson the learner should be able to deduce the themes from the novel and analyze the style of writing of the novelist now Let's look at the themes itself, the themes of Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. Our first theme is love. Because all the hatred and revenge in the story was caused by love. Love was the basis for all the hatred and revenge in the story. Heathcliff and Catherine's love was a strong one. It was a very, very strong one. And it was that love that caused that hatred that Heathcliff had for Catherine. The love between Catherine and Edgar was like a foliage in the wood. Like it would have changed over time. She just admired him. But her love for Heathcliff was one that was very solid and eternal. So that's the difference between the love between Catherine and Heathcliff and Catherine and Edgar. We also have the love between young Catherine and Harrington Earnshaw, which was also very genuine. They really cared about each other. It wasn't the love that all of them were having in the play, in the novel. It was a very genuine love. Another theme in the book is the fertility of revenge. Sometimes we want to take revenge and then we discover that after everything we've done, it still doesn't give us that utmost satisfaction. Heathcliff believes that the Earnshaws and the Lintons have wronged him gravely and he exerts his revenge on them. He takes their mansions. Although he gained some bitter satisfaction through causing pain for others, he made so many people unhappy in the novel. He doesn't achieve any personal happiness. He doesn't achieve any personal happiness. His death alone and desperate for his first love shows the fertility of his revenge he felt he would be happy after everything but in the end he wasn't happy and he died alone and desperate for the first love which is Catherine. so you see how fertile his revenge mission was in the end there was no maximum satisfaction so let's look at the literary devices in the novel the first literary device is the writing style the novel as you can see is a victorian novel a lovely victorian novel the style of the wuthering heights is very poetic the writer was very poetic and lyrical in her writing due to bronte's use of romantic imagery so anytime you imagine a scene it's always more romantic and emotional dialogue in the novel whenever they are having a conversation there is always the use of strong emotions when they are talking to each other so that's the writing style of emily bronte in wuthering heights the tone is very critical and disapproving throughout most of the novel very disapproving because so many things were happening and the way the writer was writing it he was showing how disapproving and disappointing it was all true but it changes to more hopeful and compassionate towards the end hopeful and compassionate towards the time when heathcliff realizes that there were so many things he had done wrong there were so many people he had caused pain and in the end he wasn't happy so he decided okay fine i can see that young harrison and young catherine were in love he finally allowed them to marry so that he can finally go in peace and be buried alongside his first love catherine so that is the tone of the novel now let's be looking at the figures of speech in the novel we have simile in page 38 we have we all kept as mute as mice a full half hour in page 40 we see and her eyes sparkled as bright as diamonds and in page 173 she grew like a larch another figure of speech is personification her tongue was always going singing laughing and playing everybody who could not do the same this is Catherine's tongue page 25 but the snow and wind whirled widely through even reaching my station and blowing out the light another figure of speech is metaphor it was not the thorn bending to the honeysuckles but the honeysuckles embracing the thorn here Catherine is seen as the thorn 
and the lanterns are the honeysuckles so you're looking at they said it was not the thorn bending to the honeysuckles meaning it wasn't capturing bending to the wheels of the lanterns but rather the lanterns trying to embrace Catherine, trying to bring her in because they wanted to have a feel of who Catherine Earnshaw exactly was. So you understand that the former, which is Catherine, was stubborn. She's a very stubborn person. While the Lintons are very sweet, very sweet and adorable people trying to bring Catherine in and make her sweet and nice like them. Another another style is point of view. The first narrator in the book is John Lockwood. John Lockwood, you remember, is the owner of the person who rented the Trush Crush Grange, the mansion of the Lintons. So he was the first person narration in the first chapter of the novel. Then the lengthy sections of the novel are narrated by Nellie Dean as a first person retrospective as she recalls her memories of the past. So the story now started with Nellie Dean's remembering the past because Lockwood asked her and then it was we now the story was now being told through the flashback of Nellie Dean the maid and then we have our evaluation examine symbols and symbolism in Bronte's Wuthering Heights how did Bronte use irony to tell the story of love and revenge in Wuthering Heights so We've come to the end of another awesome and exciting class on the themes and style in Emily Bronte's Wuthering Heights. Our next class will be on the character analysis. So, don't go anywhere. I'll see you in our next class. Bye!